D&D. We have 1,600 convicts here at this whole prison. About 30 or 40 convicts with life here. This is an excellent prison. We have really well good control over it, but it's still prison. It makes it safer for everybody if they know we got good control on everything. Very seldom, but it, it can happen. It can go, it can go bad pretty quick. Colonel John C. Smith, I'm here at Dixon Correctional Institute. I've been here about 22 years. This animal shelter is one of my responsibilities. These had, they, they figured start cleaning up here a little bit. I'm always receiving letters from the inmate population wanting to come to work down here. In fact, I, I talked to a guy yesterday, but due to his charge, he's not a good candidate to come down here. We have five inmates right now that care for, we have 42 dogs and 17 cats. When those numbers get higher than what they have been, you know, we're always looking to maybe get another couple hands down here, but they have to be hand selected. Look, he's bringing the food. He's bringing the food. We come in about 6.30 in the morning, start feeding, switch them around, start cleaning up their kennels throughout the day, constantly. Take them out after lunch for obedience and walking them. Give them a little play time, seven days a week. It is a lot of work. Even though it's fairly work intensive, it's really a good job. From basically from where you walked in that gate up there to where you see all the way back here is what we have to let dogs access and run and play. It's like jailbreak. When they open the door, the dogs head out and they go that way. This has been forthcoming since Katrina in 2005. This is where the idea came from. They had a lot of the evacuation dogs came from Katrina. They were kept out at the farm. The inmates were able to take care of the dogs and the Humane Society was there and they saw how the inmates interact with the dogs. And, you know, so it was like a, basically a good combination. They said, we, this, this could work. Everybody pays attention when the food comes out. We were real pleased with it when HSUS volunteered and made the, made the offer that, hey, can you build something inside the prison? Can you build a temporary facility and can you build a permanent facility? We said, yes, we can. So they gave us the, the money to do it and we built it with the inmate labor and uh, it's turned out to be a real plus. Those were they born? Yeah, they were actually born in the shelter. But we got the mom, she was, these are two, two out of four. People I've talked to, it means the world to them. They like knowing that if there's a stray dog in the yard or something like that and they can get the dog here, we're gonna make every possible attempt at getting that dog home. We're the, we're the one for this parish. What you say, little Ronnie? What are you doing? What are you doing this morning, huh? What? They coming, they bringing it, they bringing it, they bringing it. They're bringing it. I never let Dad tried it. I think it'll work. If it's working here, it'll work on the street. Come on, Shara. This is my favorite right here. This is Shara right here. We'll bring outside. All right, I'm locked up. I'm incarcerated. I could be doing something worse than this here, but this is something positive. Then you got outside visitors that comes in and adopt dogs. The dog gonna reflect on you if what you taught that dog. I love it, I love it with all my heart. Put my two cents in it. And I never put my two cents in none, but I'll put my two cents in the shelter, for sure. Some of these guys used to be real hard heads, in trouble, all that kind of stuff. And I've kind of seen them grow. And I've seen them loosen up a little bit. They're not as hard, they're a little more friendly, um, nicer, I guess. Um, it's not really a term you hear a lot in prison, but it, it has. It, it's kind of softened him up a little bit. We figured he got hit by a car. He was found on the side of the road, and the vet examined him, and uh, she said it's a possible fractured pelvis. 
She said eventually he'll start walking right again, just but he walks on his front legs right now. I think more prisons need an animal shelter inside, and we're very fortunate to have this in, in the middle of our prison. Working with the animals and learning to love them, you know. Something I ain't never done before, so as in time, I can't understand them, you know, about being locked up, caged, homeless, all that played a big part, you know. You see somebody else get a home, kind of shine on them a little bit, you know, it growed on them. I think what it does is gives them responsibility so that they understand responsibility. Some of these guys didn't have any. Just their self-esteem goes up for being involved in it. I'm starting to do the right thing now. I'm doing the right thing. You know, I ain't, I ain't going to lie to you and say I don't. I look forward for the next day. It's not like it's in prison no more. You come to that gate and it's just a different, it's like being free almost. I want to see them go home. I watch them come and I watch them go. I love to see when, they, when the dog walk out that gate, hit that parking lot, get in that car. I know it's all right, you know. You still got good people in the world. You know, that really love animals. It'll be all right.